Hi, and welcome to our video on mitosis. What we see here are population of prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells undergoing cell division. Cell division is fundamental to all cells on the planet, as it is the way in which they, and by extension, all living things reproduce. The question in this video that we're going to look at is how do cells divide? Specifically, we'll be looking at how eukaryotic cells divide. Prokaryotic cells divide too. This bacterium is in the middle of the process. They divide through a process known as binary fission, but that's not really what we're going to focus on here. We're going to focus instead on the eukaryotic cell cycle, the process of mitosis, and comparisons between mitosis in animal-like and plant-like eukaryotic cells. It's important to understand that cells must divide. The main reasons why cells need to provide are for reproduction or passing on information to the next generation, and in multicellular organisms for the purposes of growth and repair. You've been able to grow as a human being because you've made more cells than have been destroyed in your body. Similarly, anytime you've damaged yourself, your body has made new cells to replace the ones that were killed. Eukaryotic cells follow what's known as a cell cycle, which takes them from the point of division through to the point in which they're going to divide again, if they're actually going to divide again. Most of a cell's life is not spent in division. It's actually spent in a stage known as interphase which is shown here in orange. We break interphase up into three major subphases. In G1, the cell grows and prepares to replicate its DNA. If the cell is going to divide, it then goes through synthesis of its DNA, or the S phase, which is where replication occurs. And then the cell prepares to divide during G2. The division itself happens during mitosis, which is shown here as the M phase, and that's when one cell is going to give rise to two cells. Most of the cells in your body are actually never going to divide again. They're in a terminal non-dividing state known as G0, which they entered into after their last division. But any cell that is going to divide is going to go through all of these phases of the cell cycle. The process of mitosis can actually be observed under a light microscope, and as a result, it was one of the first cellular processes that was observed. This illustration is from 1900. During mitosis, chromosomes are visible, and it's the fact that you could see chromosomes under a light microscope which actually gave rise to their name, chroma meaning colored, and some meaning body. When dividing cells are stained, the chromosomes are visible. Chromosomes are made out of chromatin, which is a combination of DNA and protein. We've already seen this in terms of the nucleosome, which is a combination of histone protein scaffolding and the DNA that is wrapped around it. But when the DNA exists as chromosomes, these nucleosomes are complex with additional scaffolding proteins, which lead to the sort of classic X structure of chromosomes that we're aware of. You can see the condensation of chromosomes during the early stages of mitosis, and you can see them here in these fluorescence microscopy images. During interphase, the chromosomes exist in the nucleus as loose, decondensed material. And they do not exist as these tightly packaged chromosomes. It's also important to understand that this X structure is itself a replicated chromosome. It's actually two copies of the same chromosome, which are referred to as sister chromatids. These are identical copies of genetic information that are joined at a region of the chromosome known as the centromere. Below the centromere are a series of proteins known as the kinetochores, which are actually going to function in the movement of chromosomes during cell division. Let's look at an overview of mitosis to get a handle on what's going on. For the purpose of this illustration, the DNA is always existing as chromosomes, even though we know that that's not actually how the DNA exists during interphase. To keep track of what's happening during mitosis, we'll use a concept known as the haploid number, which we symbolize with N. N is the number of unique chromosomes found in an organism. In the case of the organism shown in this slide, N is equal to 1. In something like fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, N is 4. In humans, for instance, it's 23. The haploid number is species specific. Different species have different haploid numbers. And since different organisms have different haploid numbers, it's easiest to generalize what's happening by representing the haploid number algebraically with the letter N. Starting from the left, we can see that the DNA is first copied, and then the events of mitosis occur as we move to the middle of the diagram, resulting in the production of two genetically identical daughter cells. Each of those cells has the same genetic makeup as the cell that gave rise to them through the process of mitosis. With that in mind, let's go through and look at the details of mitosis in depth. The first step of mitosis is known as prophase. During prophase, we begin to see the chromosomes forming in the nucleus, and we see the production of a structure known as the mitotic spindle, shown here in yellow, which is going to be involved in moving the chromosomes later on in mitosis. As we move through the steps of mitosis, you'll always see a cartoon diagram of what's happening and a fluorescence microscopy image of a real cell engaged in the process of mitosis at that particular step. The next stage of mitosis is known as prometaphase. During prometaphase, the nuclear membrane is going to disintegrate, leaving the chromosomes in the cytoplasm. 
and the centrioles, which are the structures that are giving rise to the mitotic spindle, will complete their movement to the opposite poles of the cell. Following prometaphase, we move into metaphase, where the chromosomes align at the equator or the metaphase plate of the cell, and they attach to the spindle. Chromosomes attach to the spindle using their kinetochore proteins that are connected to their centromeres. If that seems like a lot of jargon, you should probably go back and look at our chromosome anatomy discussion from earlier on in this presentation. During anaphase, the sister chromatids separate at the centromeres, and they begin to migrate to the poles of the cell. Once anaphase is completed, each pole of the cell will have one copy of each of the chromosomes in the cell. In telophase, the nuclear membrane is going to form again around the chromosomes at each pole of the cell. The chromosomes are going to begin decondensing back to the chromatin state in which they'll exist during interphase. The spindle will disintegrate, and the cell membrane will divide during the final step, which is known as cytokinesis. That's the process of mitosis, taking us from the end of interphase with replicated chromosomes in the parent cells through the production of two genetically identical daughter cells following the conclusion of cytokinesis. Mitosis in plant-like cells is almost identical, with the main differences being that plant-like cells do not possess centrioles, though they'll still produce a mitotic spindle, and plant-like cells need to produce a new partition of the cell wall separating the two daughter cells at the end of cytokinesis. To look at how that happens, I've blown up the relevant phases of the process in these plant-like cells. You can see the production of the new cell plate in the middle through the deposition of cellulose. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of mitosis. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure you can explain why cells need to divide. Make sure you can describe the main phases of the eukaryotic cell cycle. Make sure you can explain how the events of mitosis lead to the production of two genetically identical cells. Make sure you can identify and draw the stages of mitosis in a cell that has a few unique chromosomes, maybe with, an, maybe with a haploid number of two or something like that. If you can do those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down the questions that you have so that you can get the answers that you need. Thanks again for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.